How would you, if you were to have a magic wand and make it <laughs> make it easy? I mean, what sort of things would you think are missing for like those sorts of experiences? Um, just across different trip types. Or do, I mean, because mean, um, I have kids, more family. <laughs> like, what what do you think is missing that could make it easier, like from the UI point of view or experience? I, I think just not just focusing on those primary use cases and thinking more about okay, when you have a group coming to stay at a property, what does that look like? How do you sort of, how does the property know how many people are actually trying to fit into that room? And similarly with like a family, you know, can that actually accommodate a family? Uh, I think that's um, that's where it needs, there needs to be a bit more structural change to how these uh, like booking websites actually work because they're, they're very much optimized for where they get most of their bookings. I think less so for these different use cases. And, and, and the, as you were speaking, a thing popped into my head, especially like the booking thing. Um, me and Ryan have spoken about this in the past of like iconography and stuff. Like well, you have a mm. lot of, like some of these places have a lot of information that need to convey Wi-Fi, pet friendly, all that. I mean, what did you find was the most effective? I've always thought the thing that if you're going to use iconography, you have to use labels because yeah. interpret you leave stuff down to interpretation. Often people make the wrong one. And that's the worst thing is to end up at a hotel with a pet when it's like not pet friendly because you misunderstood an icon. I mean, how did you deal with that immense mm. amount of information that has to be customizable as well, depending on location and or not? Yeah, I, mean, I think icons are quite problematic, right? Particularly when you look at some um, different cultural interpretations. So you could have, yeah, maybe if you said there's like an icon for a chapel, but maybe you're in the Middle East, maybe that should be the the moon and the and the star. Yeah. Icon or similarly with like, you know, maybe a piggy bank for money, but then the, a pig could also be offensive <laughs> in other yeah. countries. So like, that's where icons, like they're not really that universal. So I, I think that that's where you need the labels, right? To really describe like what the thing actually means. Some some icons, I guess, get learned. I think you guys also mentioned like the Wi-Fi icon. A lot yeah. of people know what it means now because we've learned it, but um, yeah, it depends. Is it drawing on like a metaphor from the real world or did you just learn it somewhere? And depending on your cultural background, particularly if you're you know, coming from different um, countries where maybe you didn't grow up with with computers and your first experience was through a was through a smartphone, and um, you're maybe not as exposed to to icons, they might just have different interpretations. So um, I'd say I'd say they help, but with, with something like like the Booking.com website, everything's translated into a bunch of different languages and say it's more reliant on, on copy than icons. The icons are just like there to help a little bit. Yeah. It's been my impression. So, I mean, cause most, um, we found that a majority of users scan read, they don't actually fully read. Mm. So how do you deal with that, with that immense amount of information? I mean, is there's a lot of UX and also cause a lot of this stuff is generated by the, uh, vendors themselves, presumably like they're not necessarily like booking.com is not get hiring a UX writer for every single property, are they? No, so the, the, the copy on the website is generated. Um, the information is provided by the property. Some of it is vetted, some of it isn't. Yeah. And this, this is a real challenge with with a platform at that scale because it is essentially a marketplace. So yeah. a lot of consumers will see it being more like uh, going and booking with the property directly. In reality, it's it's more like buying something on eBay. So there's, uh, you know, the booking.com is more of a middleman. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult to, yeah, you have to vet. Uh, not all the information is vetted. Um, but to answer your question about the scannability, I don't know if I'm actually the best person to answer that, to be honest. <laughs> no, I'm just curious. Sorry. It's like, you know, it's like yeah. a, if, if, yeah. if you notice a difference between like bookings that which had a lot of text versus a little, because uh, I mean, some users really appreciate a lot of information, but I think most are trying to make a decision within a specific set time, right? Yeah, um, that makes sense. Look, part of this is my opinion, but part of it's also things that I've observed. I'd say generally it, it depends on who's booking. So different information will be important to different people. As you mentioned before, like you travel with your family. So there's things to you that will be important that might be different to me. If I'm say, just going to book a property by myself, I might just be primarily looking for a room. Maybe I'm not so worried about what are the facilities of the property. Yeah, you know, can kids be accommodated? So I think it, the information caters to different audiences. I'd say what seems to work is more is better, but I think that's just if you've got a platform that's catering to a lot of different people, yeah. then uh, generally the more information 
converts. But I think that's just because you're dealing with such a volume of focus. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Design Huddle. The opinions expressed are solely our own and do not express the views or opinions of our employer.